Today I'm building a portable backup card that's powerful, versatile, affordable and easy to build. This 48 volt solar generator packs a punch as it's capable of delivering 2500 watts of power continuously and has over 3000 watts of stored energy all for under $1,000. To make it simple and portable, I'm gonna be using this little hand cart and these are like 20 bucks at Harbor Freight. They're very easy to collapse and everything so they get very small if need be and they can be extended to make it a little bit easier to use, just like that. And then I just cut off a piece of board and painted it black just so it looks a little bit nicer and put a couple of screws in. So the first step is just gonna be putting this board right here and then we're gonna bring the battery in, put it on the bottom and then we're gonna strap it in, which is what's gonna be holding everything in place. Speaking of the battery, let's take a closer look as it's the most important and the most expensive part of the build. I went with a 48 volt light time, 60 amp hour battery. Why does it say 51.2 volts everywhere? Well, the nominal voltage of this battery is actually 51.2 volts as this is lithium iron phosphate battery and each of the 16 cells here are 3.2 volts. This is important to keep in mind because some of the older inverters might be made for other chemistries or 15 cell batteries and voltage could be different. As the note on the box states, the post bolts are included, so let's make sure we don't lose those. Inside the box, first we see the documentation and importantly the manual. This is the best manual I've had with any of the batteries I've tested in the last year. Each page has lots of useful information, especially if you're just learning about setting things up like this, but in most cases, the default values on the inverter and the charger will do just fine, as long as you select the correct voltage, of course. For manual setup, we have recommended control settings, recommended cable sizing, parallel connection limits, storage suggestions, and more. Anyway, this battery has 3,072 watt hours of usable energy, making it a workhorse for any off-grid power solution. But it can also be used for many other applications as it can deliver up to 120 amps continuous discharge and can handle a peak of 350 amps for five seconds. This is important for those high demand applications like golf carts or running heaters that have a high initial draw. That means this battery can provide 6,144 watts of continuous power for energy storage applications. Now, we won't be able to do that with the inverter I have chosen for this project, but it's very impressive and great to see we have so much headroom left in the battery. Doing a little more research on the battery, I noticed that they are using grade A cells, which allows the battery to have a 2C discharge rate, as well as provide stable performance and hopefully longevity even under heavy use. In fact, the battery promises over 4,000 deep cycles and extremely low self-discharge rate, so it should be perfect for daily solar use and long-term storage alike. This is also UL2271 certified, which is great to see as many other batteries you find online don't have any certifications at all. This battery sells for $630 with free shipping, which isn't cheap, but it is a good value considering the specs and lifetime reputation for durability. Let's take a quick look around. Not much on both of the sides, really. Uh, we have a few uh, cautions here. So do not short circuit, do not reverse connections, do not disassemble, do not throw into fire and do not heat above 70 Celsius and has a five year warranty. Let's see what do we have on the top here? Well, not too much, same wall formation. And we have these standard M8 terminals here with the bolts that we saw earlier. This battery is surprisingly not that heavy. It's only about 50 pounds. So you can easily carry it, you know, with just one person. You don't need anybody to help you with this. And now we can actually get it strapped in. This simple ratchet strap will do exactly what we need. So it's super easy. I'm just gonna put the hook on the back here and then go around the battery just so it's nice and secure. There you go. This is where everything gets nice and tight. That's perfect. Look at that. That's not going anywhere. With the battery securely in place, it's now time to install the inverter. I have already pre-wired it, which was very, very simple. What I've done is attach the positive input cable. So this is gonna be our battery plus, it's going to the battery. And of course I just put a simple breaker in line, this way it will be protected. I'm using six gauge wire, but depending on which inverter you're using, you may get away with smaller wires, but 
bigger is always better in in my opinion when it comes to wiring so i've just put in a couple of screws right here so i'm just gonna put my inverter on those screws just like that i'm gonna put another screw at the bottom just to make sure it doesn't move now it's definitely not going anywhere of course inverters are also very important and here i went with the olt and p i have no idea how to pronounce that 2500 watt pure sine wave inverter it's important to get one that is pure sine inverter if you plan on powering any kind of sensitive electronics, even if the modified wave inverters are cheaper. I like this one because it was inexpensive at $186 and because it has adjustable low voltage disconnect. This means I can use it with this 16 cell battery as well as 15 cell battery that I'm currently building and I'll have a video on that in a couple of weeks. I also like that it has a remote display that can be attached away from the inverter for easy monitoring. It came with the cables I'm using in this video and it has four receptacles already built in so we don't have to buy anything else. To make it just a little bit easier I put this hand cart on its side so now it's just leaning against this box right here and it'll be easier to install this smart charge controller. I'm using this Victron Energy as I mentioned this is MPPT 100 by 20 so this will do a max of 100 volts so that's how you wire up your uh, solar panels and up to 20 amps. This is one of the reasons why we want to go with a 48 volt system because 20 amps at 48 volts is a lot more than 20 amps at 12 volts. So we can get a lot more charge into the battery using basically the same panels. I have already pre-wired this one as well. It's super, super simple. This is our PV inputs so or solar input. And I put a couple of these connectors on it just so I can connect the solar panels a little bit easier and it's easier to disconnect them. The other two wires are going to be connected to the battery so this is where it says battery plus and minus. So these are just two wires that I put a couple of lugs on and I'm going to connect this straight to the battery. Yes you can also put the load on this charger but it's actually going to be pretty low output from here so I'll be connecting my inverter directly to the battery. I'm going to put my charge controller just right here so there's a nice little spot for it here and all the cables can go inside so we have no cables sticking out on this side there you go that's not going anywhere i've also installed this little bracket for my breaker very simple just two screws it comes with the breaker unfortunately it's going to be upside down because my wires are not long enough but that's fine we have just enough length to put this wire to the positive terminal right here so it's going to go like that so will our charge controller wire that's going to go here as well the negative is going to go over there and that's basically it one negative about this system is it it does not have a grid input so if you want to charge the battery from the grid you cannot do that with this system you'd have to upgrade the charge controller to have that capability all right before we start we're going to make sure that this breaker is off which it is like i mentioned this is upside down so you have to remember that you might want to get longer cables and put it the right way up now we can use the included m8 bolts and then we can connect uh, we can start with the negative wires for example but we're going to do both at the same time you want to make sure these are tightened to spec and i will go with a torque wrench and get them to the correct spec after these terminals come with a little protective cap so i will be using that just a little extra safety this is a 48 volt system so it can be dangerous if you're not careful and that's basically it for the build how simple was that so we can now switch on the breaker turn on the inverter i have this remote control for this inverter i'm going to stick it on here probably with some double-sided tape and there you go so we can now see that we are 52.5 volts 120 volts coming out of the inverter so now we can basically plug anything in up to 2500 watts and just use it how cool is that but what i will actually do right now it's actually pretty late in the day now i'm going to plug this into the solar panels you see behind me so hopefully put some charge in in the morning tomorrow if it's sunny it's been pretty cloudy lately but even with the clouds we should get a little bit of charge into this battery very easy to move around look at that no problem at all and the nice thing when in storage we can even move this down so it takes only this much space good luck getting a pre-built system with this capability for even double the price all 
All right, so I brought my cart into my garage. Obviously, don't want to leave this outside or charge it outside. This is not meant for cold weather. I just wanted to show you that you can actually do it in a very short amount of time. And honestly, to give you a little bit of a better light, as you can see, the light in here is not very good. But these are the connectors that are coming from the solar panels outside. I'm just going to plug them in. So we're going to simply plug it in just like that. That's it. Now it's plugged in and tomorrow morning when the sun's out, we're going to be charging this battery. Now let's quickly talk about the top five reasons to build this sub 1000 solar generator. The first is cost savings. A similar pre-built system with these specs would cost well over $2,000. So tons of savings to be had here and it will only take you maybe 30 minutes to build. Well worth the time in my opinion. The second is versatility. This system powers anything from laptops to mini splits and can even add a small charge to your EV, maybe like five to 10 miles of driving. The third reason is portability. Its compact wheel design makes it perfect for emergencies or outdoor use. Of course, you can't use it in the rain, but if you need to bring it with you when you go camping or anything like that, this could easily power your devices for quite a while. The number four reason is sustainability. Powered entirely by renewable energy, it reduces reliance on gas generators and fossil fuels. So you can charge it up, have a couple of panels outside, so it does a little bit of charge every day. And then when you need it, it's ready to go. It'll be kept top top basically all the time, and you can use it in an emergency. Very, very useful. The number five reason for building one yourself is the future proofing. This is easily upgradable. So you can just buy another one of these batteries when the budget allows. And then you can have over 6,000 watts of stored energy and you can even upgrade uh, your charge controller to maybe charge it from the grid. You can do whatever you want. You can upgrade it piece by piece and build a really big, nice system that can do basically anything. It can then even power crucial loads in your house or whatever you want to use it for. The main limitation with this setup is of course the sun. If there's no sun, you are not charging. I wanted to show you how those four $30 solar panels can easily charge this battery, but this is what the weather looked like for the last couple of days. I got about 320 watt hours the first day as it was cloudy all day. And shortly after the last clip, it started snowing, so we didn't get much charge either. Only 270 watt hours. With better solar panel placement and full day of sun, we can easily charge this battery from zero to 100 in one day. Either way, let's see what we can power with it. All right, so I brought the whole cart into my studio and we're doing a quick test here. As you can see, we are powering a bunch of stuff right now. So we have a one studio light, we have another studio light, we have a heater on high. So this is a resistive heater. It's on the highest setting. And I also have a humidifier going over there. So yeah, plenty of stuff and I'm even charging my iPad. We are using about 1500 watts right now. And hey, it's doing all of this off grid from the solar charge that we have gotten from the sun earlier. Of course, the more sun you have, the better. And the nicer the weather, the warmer the weather, the better it will work. But look at this, in an emergency, you can power all your lights, you can power a heater, you can power your humidifier, you can plug in your little fridge, you can even plug in your full size fridge and this will power it. Now that you've seen it built and tested, what do you think? Is this a better version of the 12 volt solar cart I built a few months ago? I don't know, you gotta let me know. I like both for different reasons, but this one feels like a great improvement and can easily be upgraded with another battery or a more capable solar charger like I mentioned earlier. It's also super easy to build, which I love. I would also love to hear your comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!